You know, tonight I come to you with a very heavy heart, um, with a very disturbed soul. And from a space that needs to be addressed. I was so disturbed today when I got an article um, sent to me by uh, some conscious sisters uh, who had been uh, keeping up with this trial. Um, and ultimately sent me the results from the trial. Uh, well, let me just start off by saying um, a jury convicted uh, an iconic civil rights figure of incest Thursday after concluding that he had sex with his teenage daughter 15 years ago. The Reverend James L. Bevel, 71, a top lieutenant to Martin Luther King Jr., who also helped organize the Million Man March, faces up to 20 years in prison when he is sentenced. The four-day trial in London County Circuit Court included bizarre testimony about Bevel's philosophies for eradicating lust and parents' duty to sexually orientate their children. This is Reverend Bevel. Bevel's daughter testified that she was repeatedly molested by Bevel beginning when she was just six years old, culminating in an act of sexual intercourse in 1993 and 1994 that formed the basis of the incest charge. <sighs> the jury reached, it's really hard for me to uh, read this story, so I just want y'all to bear with me. Uh, I take this real personal and um, I'm going to share uh, some of my personal experiences uh, regarding this issue. Before the verdict, the jury had heard only passing reference to Bevel's role in the civil rights movement. But during the sentencing phase of the trial Thursday afternoon, the jury saw a documentary that spelled out Bevel's key role in organizing the 1963 Birmingham Children's Crusade. Bevel and King were leading organizers of marchers in which police turned fire hoses and dogs on the child protesters, drawing international attention to the brutality that was keeping segregation in place in the South. Bevel was also a leading organizer at other iconic events in the civil rights movement, including the march in 1965 on Selma, Alabama. Prosecutor Cole Whitman acknowledged Bevel's accomplishment but said that the jury shouldn't be swayed by them. There's nothing I can say to take away what this man has accomplished. But there are two Jim Bevels. There are two. We're talking about the one who has sex with his child. Jurors heard a phone call between Bevel and his daughter in which he never explicitly admits to sexual intercourse but seems to take for granted that it occurred. During the call he explains the importance of teaching his daughter the science of marriage and admits that he did not want her to get pregnant after the incident. Family members who confronted Bevel in 2004 testified that Bevel read a written accusation by his daughter and replied that he did not contest the facts that she laid out. But Bevel denied the charge on the witness stand. He testified that his family mistakenly perceived his refusal to deny the specific allegations against him as an admission of guilt. Now, let's just stop right here. The, the family confronted him with these accusations on a piece of paper. And the man looks at the piece of paper and then <laughs> replied that he did not contest the facts. Well, he has nothing to say about it. Well, then that means you did it, right? I mean, there's no two ways around this question. Either you did it or you didn't. So if I bring you a bunch of papers and I'm uh, accusing you of a hideous act like this, 
it would seem to me that you would be offended, you would be hurt, you would be angry, and you would be more than willing to hurry up and f clear your name by reacting firstly by saying, I didn't do nothing like that. Are you crazy? Public defender Bonnie Hoffman urged the jury to ignore evidence that Bebel led an unconventional communal lifestyle in which he taught it was parents' duty to sexually orientate their children. Instead, she told the jury to focus on the single incident for which Bevel had been charged, an act of sexual intercourse that occur occurred in 1993 or 1994 while the daughter was a teenager and was living with her father in Leesburg. Hoffman said there were questions about the timeline. The daughter said she could not recall exactly what year that the act had occurred and that her recollection of when she lived in Virginia did not fully mesh with the school records and other testimony. Hoffman also questioned why the daughter returned to voluntarily live with her father after the alleged incident of incest. The daughter testified that she went back to live with her father because she had no place else to go. Hmm. Prosecutor Nicole Whitman warned the jury against getting confused by Bevel's sometime convicted implications of his philosophies, I mean convoluted uh, explanations of his philosophies and his justifications for his actions. There is no excuse for his philosophy in the law or whether he's eccentric or whether he's an historical figure. There's no exception, Whitman said. The Associated Press generally does not identify the victims of sexual abuse, but the daughter is one of 16 children Bevel said he has had with several different women. The trial divided members of Bevel's large family with relatives relatives testifying for both the prosecutor and the defense. Even the daughter expressed mixed emotions as she waited Thursday for a verdict. She was occasionally joined by her father as to cooed over the daughter's new baby girl, Bevel's granddaughter. The hardest part is I love my father and I wish he loved me as much as I love him, the daughter told the jurors in the sentencing plans. The jury must recommend a prison term ranging from 5 years to 20 years. The judge would then have an option to accept the recommendation or lower it, but he cannot increase it. In the 1960s, Bevel was a leader in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which is better known as SCLC. Oh my God. And the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. SNCC, two of the stalwart organizations that led and spearheaded to efforts to desegregate the South. In 1992, he was vice presidential running mate to political maverick Lyndon LaRoche, who has a home in London County, but at the time was in federal prison for income tax evasion. Now, with the immaculate and, inc and impeccable credentials that Reverend James Bevel has and for all the hard work that he's put into the civil rights movement and to all the uh, dedication that he's exhibited in organizing the community for him to have to go out in a cesspool of shame like this it's such a travesty to myself, to women all across the world, to parents all across the world, and to the legacy of Dr. King, and to, above all, to the Creator himself. This is the way I'm going to remember James Bevel by raping his daughter.